Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Taw Wars, the Dice Tower board game. This is a two to four player game that takes roughly about 30 to uh, 60 minutes to play and it's for ages 12 and up. And in the game, Taw Wars, you're going to be selecting a kingdom, which is going to be a die tower. And you're going to get a player board. That player board is going to have you resources, it's going to have your attack and defense and HP and dice that you're going to use to gather as you gain resources and draw drop them on the board with your dice tower. On your turn, you're going to be moving your dice tower and you'll be shooting out dice from this tower, which will be landing in different areas on the game board. There are many different game boards. I have one here for the prototype, which is going to have different locations. There's going to be the cities, there's going to be the forests, the water, and even things like the diamonds. And you want to be utilizing those resources to gain new dice, which you can then use to complete cards. You can also use them to defeat your opponents by attacking them. Throughout the game, you're going to try to get these, these uh, crowns here, and if you can get five, you'll win the game. It's a basic simple strategy game with some unique little twists and turns that kind of adds this little tabletop element like Warhammer to a board game and dice tower all in one. Oh, well, let's talk about how to set the game up, how to play, and then of course our review. Setting up the game Taw Wars is actually quite simple. You'll take the main game board and there are multiple different maps. I have one here in front of us and you'll place it within reach of all players. Then, based on the number of players playing the game, they're each going to get a die tower and a player board. Uh, you'll select a side of the map to play on and there's a certain rule as to how far you can place in each different areas and corners of the map. Additionally, your game board is going to come with a value die, and D4, as well as a 6, 8, 12, 10, and 20, and they'll be going to be placed along the resources map. You're also going to gain two resources of each type, and you're going to place your cube on the two section. Place a die on the crown, indicating you have zero crowns out of five, and then you're going to place die on the eight for defense, the one for attack, and the five for HP. And this is what you're going to utilize throughout the game. The last thing you'll do is set aside any other tokens as well as your two sticks for movement that you'll be using as you move your dice tower around the game board. After you set your dice tower up and your game board, as well as the main map, you're ready to begin the game Taw Wars. Well, how to play? It's quite simple as well. Playing the game Taw Wars is actually quite simple. There are uh, four phases in a round, and in a round each player will take place in e take part in each of the phases. The first phase is the quest phase. What you're going to do is you're going to take one quest from the quest display. There are four quests out. You choose one, you place it face up in front of you. Um, additionally, each player will get to do that as well in turn order. Taking a quest, placing it in front of them. If this is not the first round, maybe it's the third or even fourth round, and you already have two quests, instead of taking one from the top of the deck or from the display, you must discard one of your quests because you can never have more than two. After you've got your quest, the quest round is complete or the quest phase is complete and you move on to giving orders. Uh, giving orders is basically in player order for each of their dice on the board they can gather or they can increase them. So uh, as the game goes on, players are going to drop dice out on the game board. And based on where they land, they can choose to do one of two things. A, they can take the dice back and gain the resources of the location that they landed on. It could be in the forest, in which case you're going to gain logs. It could be in the water, where you'll gain fish. Or it could be on the mountains, where you'll gain rocks, and so on and so forth. If it's on a city, it's a wild, and you can only take it and remove it and gain one of any resource. So you can take the dice off and gain the resources based on the number. So if it's a five and it's in the water, I gain five fish. I return this back to my mat to where I can then buy it again. The other option is I can leave it on the board. If I leave it on the board, I can actually pip it up. So if I have a six, a five, I can go to six. And now next turn, I'll have more resources to take from the board. There's a variety of reasons why you will do this, which I'll talk about in the review. Regardless of the basic ideas, taking them or pipping them up. Next phase is the recruit and trade. This phase is taken simultaneously. Basically, you're going to be using your player board to recruit or trade in resources. You'll recruit dice and trade in resources for different things. If you want a certain die, like let's say you want the six-sided die, you have to spend based on the number next to the six-sided die of the resources in the row of that type. So I want a six-sided die, it's going to cost me two resources of the fish. I can spend those two and move the die up into the large rectangle at the top of your player board. 
Remember, you're always going to have the four-sided die to roll, so that is never going to be uh, going back into your pool to purchase again. Whenever it leaves the board for any reason, it'll come right back to the top of your player board. But you can buy any number of dice that you want, and you can purchase them by spending the resources. The eight-sided die is going to cost you two wood. Uh, the uh, ten-sided die will cost you three rocks. And then for the uh, big die, or the 12-sided die, it's going to cost you three crystals. Additionally, there is a 20-sided die as well, which is going to cost you one of each resource. However, this die is only used for attacking, which I'll explain later. Another thing to note, too, is if you want, you can spend three of each of the resources to move yourself up on the track one crown. Now, to win the game, you need to have five crowns, so this is a good way of gaining uh, your resources and spending them to gain victory points. Do note, though, that once you have four crowns, you cannot use this step to win the game. So, from four to five, you actually have to attack somebody in order to succeed. And that's the basic idea, turning in resources for crowns and gathering dice in the top portion of your game board. After that, you're done recruiting, and of course you're done spending your resources. The last phase is where we deploy dice. It's the reason why we bought the dice in the first place. To start off with our navigate and deploy step, we're going to select our die tower. We're then going to be able to either A, move the tower, or B, rotate it. If we want to move it, we're going to take our token that allows us to move, in this case I have a popsicle stick for now, and we're going to move it that distance. You can move it along this track as long as it never rotates, it has to go straight across, and you can stop it, and then you remove the stick and leave it wherever it lands. You can never go farther than this, but you can choose to go less. If you do not want to move your die tower, uh, as opposed to that, you can actually rotate it. You can rotate it as much as you want, as long as it doesn't leave the space where it started, and so that way you can roll dice and basically kind of initialize where you want the dice to roll. Note too though that in these dice towers there's a little lip on them as well as a bump in the middle that can ensure that your dice are never going to go exactly where as planned. So more, die, more than one die is going to be necessary when dropping them on the game table. After you've chosen to either A, rotate, or B, move, then you're going to deploy your die. Remember the ones I talked about in the rectangular space at the top of your game board, which is always going to have your four-sided die? This is where you'll take any of those dice that you want and you'll drop them from your die tower. They'll drop out, they'll land in a certain position on the game board. And this is how you're going to be utilizing these die in the beginning of the round in order to take them off or pick them up to gain resources or accumulate more resources later. They're also used for quests. Your quests are going to have a variety of different things you can do. You can turn in one quest card at the end of every round on your turn, and you'll do what they say. In this case here, it says for 10 attack, you can gain a crown. Uh, and you have to be in a certain space. This one here says your, your die, your character has to be in the forest area. Some of them are going to require you to be in the water area and spend one of each resource to gain an attack and a defense. And they do different things. There's three different ones. One of them requires your die to be in a certain space and your character, your, 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 your city to be in a certain area. And you have to have a certain number, in which case you'll take and gain victory points or you'll gain resources. Others will make you be in a certain area and require you to spend resources to gain a bonus and so on and so forth. Another thing too about deploying these die, well, we're talking about how do we get extra crowns, well as opposed to just deploying them to gain resources to land in certain areas, you might want to go on to the offensive. How that works is pretty simple. Hopefully you're going to be within range of another die tower, and you can choose any number of your die that you want to deploy, and you can set aside those, and you can use those as attack dice. Those dice are going to be specifically used to attack, and you have to make sure that you hit your opponent in order for it to count. If you roll a die, and it hits, you'll check the number plus your attack versus their defense, and if you have higher, you will actually gain a crown. Note too that whenever you attack or defend, you're going to gain a bonus for the attack step or the defense step. So the attacked will always gain plus one sword, and the defender is always going to get plus one defense, regardless of whether the die hits or not. You can also do some trick shots too, where for some reason you have like multiple die towers out and this thing were to launch out of here and bounce off this one and onto this one, that can count as a double attack and there's certain ways that will work as well. But regardless, for each person that you defeat in combat, that'll get you a crown. So two main ways to get crowns plus the quests. A, you can either expend resources, three of each kind. B, attack with your dice as opposed to using them as resources in order to have a higher number than your opponent's defense to score a crown and make them lose an HP. Or C, you can turn them in uh, resources wise or whether me having to attack in a certain area in order to get a crown from these cards here. And so that's the basic idea of the game. Once you've finished the navigate and deploy your dice, then you're going to pass to once again start with the quest board, taking a new quest out uh, into your supply, and then flip taking your dice back or pipping them up and continuing from there. 
Like I said, whoever hits five victory points is the person who wins the game, and you cannot win the game by simply spending resources. You have to actually do either a quest or to defeat somebody in combat. There you go, that's the basic idea of the game Tower Wars. Well, what do I think about it? A few caveats before we get started, and the first one is that if you are gathering resources from your die, whether you're t pipping them up or taking them away and adding to your supply here, wherever your city is, your big hunk of plastic here is, you're going to actually gain one resource of that type. And if you're on a city, you're going to gain a resource of the chosen type uh, that you would like, uh, basically a wild city space. Uh, furthermore, you have 5 HP, and if your HP ever goes to zero, you can lose. So, in some cases, if you get too far ahead too quickly, other players might start challenging your reign of terror by collectively engaging on you and defeating you in combat. That to note is also, though, that remember in every single combat phase, regardless of whether you win or lose combat, attackers will always get a bonus to their attack permanently, and defenders will always get a bonus to the defense permanently. The attack goes to plus 5, and the defense goes to 13. So in order to defeat a player who has 13 defense, you'll need to roll a die, maybe this 12-sided uh, die, you'll need to roll like an 8 here, and then you have to have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, so maybe a 9, a 9, and a plus 5, which will defeat that player. Thusly, they will not be able to gain any new defense. Uh, but that being said, those are the main caveats I have for the game. Otherwise, it's a pretty straightforward type of a game. You're going to basically be uh, utilizing your cities, moving them around the game board, trying to complete quests by A, having your city in a correct area, and B, dropping dice in the area that you need to drop them in, and then, of course, you're also going to be needing to recruit in certain dice. Like I said before, the D20 is only used for combat. It's a high roller, and it's very powerful. And you can use your resources to spend them in order to gain your crowns. Oh, there's also a little cool thing I forgot to mention, too. It's a small thing, but I might as well cover it here now, is when you gain resources, let's say that you gain six wood, and you already have two, and the max you can have is five, you're only going to go to five. But you're also going to gain plus one resource at the bottom uh, of the next column. So if I have two rocks and I just gain five wood and I have more wood to gain than I can't, I'll actually go to three rocks. And let's say that I had five wood and I gained one. Instead, I'd gain one rock. But I already have five rock. I would instead gain one crystal. So there is a way in which you can gain a little extra bonus resources for having a higher value. But never more than one for each time you remove a die. So you can never accumulate extra resources other than just the plus one. It's a nice fair way of doing things to where you don't feel like you lose out on having access, but you can't benefit too heavily on it either. Combat is very important in this game. Focusing on using your quest cards to beef up your attack or defense can be beneficial to you from A, preventing you from being ta targeted or attacked, um, and B, it's also a way for you to engage in combat a little easier. The dice might seem simple and straightforward as a dice tower in order to hit players, but even at a length of just like this, how they're right next to each other, Players can miss, and it wouldn't actually be too shocking on the occasion if they actually did miss, just because you can see they don't land exactly where they want to go. They actually can slide a little off to the side because they have these little bumps in the middle of the dice tower here. So it's a nice little kind of trick-taking game as well. Positioning yourself correctly, angling and using the correct dice, and making sure that you hit your targets that you want or locations that you want is gonna be valuable in this game. Now, there's a few rules as to how you're supposed to drop the dice down, of course, and I like to mix it up on the occasion. I'm like, is, my rule of thumb is as long as it's positioning, you can kind of drop it in however you want, because really, with this game, it's never gonna give you exactly, no matter how much you try and cheese it, it'll never get you exactly where you want to go. So it's a lot of fun seeing players mess with their dice and their towers to kind of secure victory and then fail even still in the process. The quality of the game is very nice. These pieces for your cities are beautiful. They're wonderful. They look different. I, lo I love to paint these guys. Uh, the board itself is very straightforward. You understand what portions of the board are forests, which portions are water, mountain, crystals, and then your cities. And they're also outlined as well. So while it might be harder to see on camera, it's definitely easy to see when you're playing the game. Gathering resources, spending resources, gaining these die, dropping them out, removing them and placing them back on your board is quite a simple process. It's very step-by-step -step and understandably easy to play the game. Four phases, each phase is played interchangeably, either turn to turn or all at once. So it makes a quick, simple type of game with a unique dexterity aspect to it as well. 
I love these type of games. It feels kind of like a dexterity slash Warhammer style game. It's a lot of fun. It's kind of unique. I haven't actually seen a lot of games that kind of implement these type of genres where it's a little bit of resource management. It's a little bit of like that Warhammer, like Warhammer tabletop type war game. And then of course you're playing with dice towers as opposed to Terminators or Tyranids. Overall, Taw Wars is a lot of fun. It's an enjoyable game with some cool art. It's vivid, it's straightforward and simple. This is great for families. Some negatives about the game now. One negative I have is the fact that you can only get two of these cards and you have to discard them when you have too many. And sometimes you'll like save up for this specific one. You, you, know, you move around for the specific type of card and it'll take a bit to get. Like what I really wish it that happened is I can either, I can take one uh, from either, from either the top of the deck or from the cards that are face up or I can um, discard and take one. I don't ever want to just have to discard. Um, I'll, I'm, like, I don't just, it feels like you can make it a lot simpler with this deck of, of, of quests here. I have to look into it again. I remember exactly how I, I didn't like it, but I like the idea of where I just always gonna get a new card if I want, or I can choose to just not get a new card. In this case, you either have to take one um, or you have to discard one if you have two and you can never have more than two. And I don't even know why it matters if they can only have two. Maybe there is a specific reason. I never tried to play with it for more, but either way, that'd be a little nice change to the game. Um, another thing too is noticing that how the dice towers are functioned and how when they, when they drop out, it's never gonna be perfect. So there's a little bit of agitation for some people when they're shooting out dice, they think it's gonna go exactly where they want and it doesn't go where they want. And that can be quite painful at certain times. Um, but really otherwise, that's pretty much the only negatives I really have is just the quests, I suppose, and some people might be agitated. Overall, it's a fun game, family friendly, game that pretty much anybody's going to like that enjoys these kind of dexterity board games, and I suggest you take a look at Taw Wars. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Taw Wars. If you're interested, there'll be a link down below in the description. The game will be on Kickstarter quite shortly, in which you can go ahead and click on that notify me when the Kickstarter is live. You can also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, our curated Instagram with other reviews of games that are not just this one here, but things that are written as well. And if you'd like our live stream, which is every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can watch us play games just like this one. So you get an idea if it's a game that you'd want to play by watching somebody else play it. So it'll help you understand more than just hearing what I have to say about it. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to defeating your dice tower against you next time.